Hello again, this is Joseph. This is a continuing tutorial of a schematic teaching video that I made previously and this will be a continuation part two. It's very important first to always know, and I get emails about this, always know the symbols first before you start attacking overall the schematic. And I'm gonna go into detail, very fine detail, on this schematic that I made a video on before. And before that, happy holidays, happy new year. Hope this will be a year of prosperity to all. Now, if you look at the symbols that I had previously, the ones that always come up and are very popular, are always the ones that connectors for male, for female with the pin number. C1 is the connector and C3, obviously the battery terminal Obviously, this is an, an alternator. The fuse, obviously. Fusible link, which is a, sometimes a, noted by a different symbol. Clock spring, which is a rotary device located in your steering wheel, which goes bad. Very, very, very popular, which is for the horn circuits that we talked about, which is for the airbag system. It allows you um, to turn the steering wheel without interrupting the electrical connectors and systems of the airbag and the horns so you can turn the steering wheel. This is the clock spring, you see? It's a circle, meaning you could turn the steering wheel, doesn't affect the electrical part of the circuits for a, for um, ABS module, for, air, uh, for uh, I'm sorry, airbag module, airbag module, and for the horn circuits. Again, this is a ground, which we'll be talking about, so all these things will appear in the circuit today. This is why I introduced this. Open switch is the one in rest position means it's open. When we activate it, it'll close from here to here. Again, the same thing. This one is closed. See, the circuit goes here. And when we activate it, it'll open. It'll flip this way. This is the one we're going to concentrate on. These two are ganged together. Meaning, when this goes in this position, this isn't the same in this position. I call these always the Siamese twins. When this goes in this position, this goes in this position, simultaneously. Now, the other one that I talked about was also over here. This is not an antenna. Someone asked me, is this a... Antenna is a different one. The symbol for an antenna that I, is, is this one. Okay, this one means there's another continuation of the schematic somewhere else. Part A, then you look for the other part of the schematic, which will be A somewhere else. If it's B, then you look for somewhere else that it says B, and so on. Uh, this is a splice. The connect, connect, uh, connections, one part to another part of a circuit. A one-speed motor, and here is two-speed motors. Reversible motor can mean bi-directional, goes both ways. Now let's start at the schematic. Where do you start first? And this is a question that I always focus on because it's, it's a little confusing to the viewers. We're going to delve into how to understand a schematic. So we can start from here. The basics. If you're troubleshooting, which we'll do later on, we're going to focus on main components. So if there's a headlight problem, I'm going to go to the headlights, look over here for the headlamps, the headlamps, and work my way back up. If I, if I think I have a problem with a daytime running light module, I'm going to focus on this module go over here and see what this is connected to and go over here and see where my my B plus, my 12 volts is coming. So I'm gonna back probe over here. Depends what you're looking for and what you're troubleshooting. That's the starting point, the part, the part of origin. Now, <coughs> start from the basics again. There's a battery over here, 12 volts. Again, it doesn't have to tell you the ground. It's understood there is a ground. So the battery voltage is 12 volts with no alternator working. When the alternator is working, obviously, maybe it's 14 volts, 13.6. Really irrelevant. The ba the most important thing is with the, we're dealing with 12 volts. So 12 volts, one, it, one side of the battery, the positive, is connected. There's a connection to one side of a fuse. 
that fuse over here called number 41 is 80 amps big fuse that's a lot of ampage i put a star over here to indicate these are very important details and and uh components to pay attention to now we notice one thing 80 amps goes right if the circuit requires 80 amps it'll draw 80 amps the other side of fuse 41 is connected to two to two other fuses connected to 42 fuse 42 and connected at the same time to fuse 48 one is 40 amps one is 30 amps so the question that was asked which fuse will blow first as somebody uh, um i believe someone asked uh um previously in a video before we answer that question let's finish a little more detail you notice i put up here 12 volt 12 volts in a circle that means the voltage however one side of this fuse this big fuse 80 amps goes to a 42 number 42 40 amp and the others and the same side of this fuse also goes to 30 amps over here the other side of this number 42 fuse 40 amp fuse goes to white black has a connection to a wire white black now usually <clears throat> the general is white is usually the base color the black the second one is usually the stripe usually that's the way it is but of course making models differ and they could have the opposite or whatever but as long as you're looking for white and black black would be the stripe white would be the base color again depends on the making model i put a star here this is very important why because this white and black goes to a splice and then now it becomes only a white so you have to pay attention to these things sometimes the color they change the color on you you might still be looking for white and black and you'll say where's white and black? but no it changed it wait for it went from white and black to white after the splice fine then it goes to an ignition switch okay the ignition switch obviously in battery and when we when we crank it ig2 we're closing the circuit remember we need a closed path for current to flow and i always teach current not voltage voltage is present in a battery whether it's connected or not the outlet in your home has 120 volts if you do not connect any appliance at a 120 volt outlet you still measure 120 volts are you pulling current if you have no appliance you're not the only time you're pulling current is when you have an appliance or a load connected to the outlet that's why i always stress put an air meter to measure the alternator not just look at the 14 volts put an air meter then i did a video on to measure how much current you are drawing from an alternator on the big thick red wire that says bat put an amp probe and of course i always like to put the the fan blower the because that draws a lot of current 20 to 30 amps when you have it at a high speed you get full voltage and much current and i like to put the lights on and and the, and the fan blow like i said and all the accessories on let's go to the next point now how much will it take to blow this these fuses question was uh, was uh, introduced if i have 80 amps that means if i have 90 amps this will blow not these this will blow first so 90 amps i'll go over here how much will i measure on this side i'll measure 12 volts here and when i put my meter to the other side of the fuse i'll measure zero why because this is open it's like nothing is in between no jumper nothing no wire therefore this is not connected to battery so 12 volts here and zero volts boom i have a i have a problem across this fuse how much would it take to, to blow these fuses well if this is 40 amps and this is 30 amps let's say 35 amps if i have 35 amps and you have to ask a question ask yourself which circuit am i dealing with there's 35 amps here in this circuit 
Remember, there are two paths. One path here, one path here. If I am drawing or pulling 35 amps, I will blow this one. I will not blow this one because the short is in this part of the circuit. Will I blow this one if I have 35 amps? No, this is rated at 80 amps. Let's say I have, let's say I, I'm drawing 45 amps. Which one will blow? It depends where the short is. If I have drawing, for, if I'm pulling 45 amps in this circuit over here, because let's say this, there's a module over here. We'll explain it. Daytime running lights. Let's say there's a the, the, there's a problem with the module. I trace it back, and guess where it, go, it goes over here? 45 amps. This will blow. Okay, it depends where the short is in. 45 can blow this one. 45 amps can blow this one. However. You have to look where the short is. If this is blown, that means the short is here, it'll blow this one. If the short is in this one, this one, it'll blow this one. So it depends which branch of the circuit the short is in. But 45 will not blow this one. Again, 45 can blow this one, 45 amps can blow this one. However, depends on the, where the circuit where the short is. Now let's continue. Let's continue. And again, thanks for subscribing to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics by Auto, for Auto, and the other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. As you can see, it takes a lot of detail and, and analyzation research to do these educational uh, schematics. So please, um, my new year, I hope I get monetized. Uh, it would be great. So please uh, um, subscribe and please watch these videos. Now, again, a white wire here. One, the other side of fuse number 48, the 30 amp, is a white wire. Go over here. Now there's a connection here. There's a connection here. Which one do we follow? Well, we can follow all of them because we're trying to understand how to, how to figure out schematics, how to read schematics. Now, since we're dealing with lighting systems, we expect to see lights, bulbs, modules, switches, fuses. What we don't have here is relays. You will always see relays in fuel pumps, um, anything, air conditioning, anything. There are relays, obviously, all over in GMs. This is just an educational schematic that I picked there are relays all over. You have to know how relays work, which I did many videos on. Relay, one side goes to B+, plus, the other one goes to ground. The computer can give that relay a ground, usually. Now, why did I bring up that point? Let's look. A connection here, a connection, you notice both white and white. But you have this, when you see a square like this, that means this is usually like a module and like combination light switch, usually like Toyotas and things like that, that have these type of things. It is in a module or in a unit. That's why there is a square uh, uh, around it. This is, as you see this, relay box. Usually it's a unit, it's a square. That means all of these are in a unit, okay? This is a module, it's a square box, but there's also little circles. Little circles, usually there are pins and numbers. Not in this schematic, but there are pins and numbers, so you know which one it's referring to. Okay? And you see over here also, this there is over here, this is like a sensor. Pin one, pin two, pin three. Also a square box around it. It could be in, in, one, in a single unit. As you see over here, the fuse box, the relay box is in a unit, a square box. That means everything is together. Everything is together. The switches, all these things are together. All these things are together. All these things are together. What's prone to, <clears throat> to go bad? Usually modules. The more electronic components you have, the more you'll have a failure rate, a higher failure rate, like in modules. Sometimes switches, whatever you switch on and off, on and off, also are prone to failure rate. Let's continue. 
We came over here. Let's choose this path. We came over here to this, B2, of this, let's say, module or unit, a switch, light switch. This is the important detail. This, like we said before, when you see the dotted line, that means they are ganged together. Remember, I used the terminology, Siamese twins. That means when this part of the switch is switched, this one, and I labeled it to make it easier. I called this one one, this one two, this one three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Whenever I put this part of the switch to, let's say, terminal one, that means this will go to terminal one, this will go to terminal one, all at the same time. When I put this to switch to terminal two, this will go to terminal two, this will go to terminal two. When I put this to terminal three, this will go to terminal three, this will go to terminal three simultaneously, together at the same time. This could be one switch, it could be S1A, S1B, S1C, whatever. It could be a different switch. They are ganged together, meaning that they are operated simultaneously. Now, you have to ask yourself the question, when I close the switch, I'm activating the circuit. How do I know which terminal over here is activating the circuit? That's a question that was asked to me. You look at the terminal and you see if there's a connection. For example, when this is in position one, this is one, this is one, this is one. They're all in position one. There is no line, there is no connection here, right? There is no connection here. There is no connection here. Why is that? Because you're in the off position, off, off. When you're in terminal two, position two, you have a connection for this one. However, there is no connection here. There is no connection here. The connection that you have, and that's why I brought up this point, Going over here to, to 2, when you put the switch in 2, position 2, you have a connection. Here is the connection that I highlighted in red. But not here, not here. So therefore, when you put this in terminal 2, you are activating current flows, follow the arrows, to a red and green, actually out of B, a B, B1, the, 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 the connector, the pin, to a few, two fuses. And what are the fuses? Parking lights, tail lights, license plate lights. These, this branch goes to these circuits, the parking lights, tail lights, license, dash lights, brightness controller. It goes to this. So this is responsible for the parking lights, among other things, right? To, to two fuses. Notice it's getting less. The fuse ampage is getting less. We went from 80, 40, 30, getting less and less, getting to 7.5, 7.4. That means these bulbs or, where, or the dash is not really drawing that much current, Right? The combination of both of these circuits, the module, the lights, right? And all these things, all these other things, these other headlamps that you'll see cannot draw more than 80 amps. So therefore, this, in this two position, when this is in two, this part of the switch will activate the parking lamps. And the dash lights. That's how you, you figure out what a switch does. Now, three, position three. So we did this branch. We took care of this branch and we said current will flow from the white one to this white one. Through this switch, come out the other side of the switch to a red and green wire to a fuse, number 32, number 30, the, the current will divide, okay? How much current will divide? Has to be less than 7.5. Maybe it's 6 amps, maybe it's 5 amps, we don't know. So red and black, and what is this? Remember I showed you the 
This is not an antenna. This is another part of a circuit. So if the other part of the circuit would be C, C, we go look up the other part of the, of the schematic where it says C. That means it's a continuation. We don't want to put too many lines, so we just cut it short, and we denote it with a triangle like this. That means it's understood. It's continued on another part of the schematic. Now, here's the difficult part. Position three. If I put this in position three, I also have a connection. If I put this in connection, th again, at the same time, this will also go to pin three. I also have a connection through a red wire out of B4. A red wire, follow it, and guess where I'm going to? Daytime running lights control unit, a module. Nice. So therefore, this will give B plus, this will give 12 volts to this, to this module from this terminal of the switch. Also, when I put this on terminal three, and I, I put this one also upon three, remember, simultaneously, Why? what does that accomplish? That accomplishes me a bunch of things. First of all, I'm still giving current to the parking lamps and the dash lights. The parking lights will still be on. But what I did when I put this, I put the switch in this position in three, I also activated the daytime running lights to give it B plus. What else did I do? Through the white wire, through B6, through here. Now this is also, all of these are in three, position three. Current can flow here, right? Current can flow here. Now, depending on where this is, they call it a dimmer, but that's a bad terminology. It's not really a dimmer. Either you're putting in a high beam or low beam. The dimmer would be probably over here where it says brightness controller, dash lights. That would be a, probably a dimmer. Very bad wording uh, terminology. But again, this is just schematic to teach students. So... We go over here. Current will flow here, will flow here, will flow here. 